everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I am doing my classroom tour and I just wanna preface this by saying it is the fourth week of school. We are now knees deep into third grade and so the room has been used, it has been loved and I have done my best to keep it neat and keep it tidy by having high expectations of my students. So the room that you're seeing is the room that was left at the end of the day. I did not pick up, I did not clean up, I have done nothing that I would normally not do at the end of the school day. So what you're seeing is raw usage of the room. Now I do have high expectations for my students, so the room is pretty clean because I don't let them leave the room without it being clean. They take pride in their classroom. So I'm gonna give you guys a tour and I also want to preface this by saying I'm probably not going to link things down in the description box below because a lot of the things that I have are from Teachers Pay Teachers and if you want them, all you have to do is kind of search for that specific thing and you will most likely see what I purchased. So let's go. Okay, so I'm going to start the tour right here by the front door. So clearly I have the front door there and this little area is just a regular desk and I have a wobble seat down here. This is kind of my cool off area. It also says keep calm and let it go. So this is kind of where I send students that are having a hard time focusing or making good decisions and they kind of just come back here and sit for a while and then when they're ready to return to class they can come back. So it also holds my hand sanitizer, my bathroom stick jar, and then I actually spray my students off with water when they come in from recess and lunch because it is so hot. They are basically dying when they come in, so I spray them off. As we move to the left, we have our main hub of the room and this is basically where everything goes as we're learning. So here I have some math vocabulary. I've got our anchor chart that we've been working with. And then if you move this way, we have ELA. And as the year progresses, this will obviously add more to it. There will be more vocabulary, more anchor charts, more silent teachers, if you will. Um, and then directly underneath are my backpack hooks. And this piece of wood was actually already in this room. I just mounted some backpack hooks that I got donated to me. I think you can get them on Amazon, probably. I just mounted those onto this piece of wood and then my principal actually came in and hung this for me. So during uh, the school day, all of my students' backpacks are there and it kind of looks like it's leaning a little bit on this end, so I'll have to go fix that, but you get the idea. Continuing on this direction, over here I have some information for students. This top basket is for work that we have done while they're absent, so basically if I have any extras after I'm done passing things out, I put it in here, and then if students are absent, they know that they can come to this little pouch and find everything that they missed, and then down here are extra spelling words, so if they have lost their list, they can come here and get another one. I also have this pencil parking lot, which I haven't really used yet. These are all the old pencils from last year, but it looks like people have started taking some, so I think I might address that when I get to a pencil problem. I have not had a pencil problem yet, so once I get to that, I'll probably add that. Then over here, I have my submission box for notebooks, and I usually have it over there and I'll show you where it usually goes but because I am getting ready to look through those there over here by my desk I just have a filing cabinet and inside are just all the things that I would usually need like really quickly I haven't really been in this drawer a lot so um, it's just kind of housing all my junk same thing with this one just kind of housing all the like little random things that are like mine personally and then this is my desk area, which I'm never really at. I don't even know why I have it. Uh, I think it's just kind of a place to like hold all my things uh, because I usually sit over here. So uh, this is just a chair that my mother-in-law gave me and I recovered the seat. And then I just have these drawers here and they don't really have a lot in them. Um, I've got some whiteboard markers up top, some chargers. Uh, my iPad is in there like a cleaner and I'm sure throughout the year I'll add more things in there. Um, but then on top I've just got some like things that I use all the time. Um, I use this camera to take pictures and videos of my students because every year I like to do like a slideshow. Uh, these are some social emotional learning cards. I've got my feedback notebook. I've got some like IEP notebooks. I've got my um, 
my school notebook so I take this with me to like meetings and stuff um, and then just some cute little containers for all my things these are like students nurse cards a grading thing um, some planner stickers and some notebooks that I'll probably never use but they're Ray Dunn, so of course I have them. I've got some other little cute Ray Dunn pieces here. But basically, um, this is my desk area. Up here I just have like kids' birthdays and like spirit days and cute little things that I've been getting throughout the year. Uh, this table is from Ikea and the legs are the expandable legs and that's what I like about this area is that it's like up and I can stand there. Around, I have these little fairy lights that I got at TJ Maxx and then I just have pictures of my little baby and my sweet hubby. And then these are all my pins that I used to have on my lanyard, but I actually took them off and I'm sticking them right there because my lanyard has cute little writing on it and I don't want it to be covered. So that's that. Moving on over here, I have the computer cart right now. It kind of goes between mine and my team teacher's room and uh, we've been using it more. So it's just living in here right now and it's been working out. Behind it, I have our technology rules and then this is hidden back here, but this is like kind of where my stuff hangs out. And then up here, I just have some more cute little like decor that's mine. There's that awesome Darth Vader I got this summer. And then these are from Teaching and So Forth. That clock does not work yet because I don't have a battery in it. <laughs> Moving on over here, I have my reading bookshelves. This is where all my books live. And then over this way is my small group area. And I'll just kind of go through what's over here. So I just have like a recycling box down there. This is for like things that I don't want anymore, but I'm not going to throw them away. So I'm just recycling them. And then I've got my copy bin here with just some things that I might want to copy. These stools I haven't brought out yet. I will later on once we get into the real swing of flexible seating and my students earn them. Um, over here I just have some like random doodads. I have um, one of my wax warmers, uh, the third grade, because I'm the team lead, so I keep the uh, walkie-talkie in my room, so anytime anyone has duty, they come in here and get that. Um, I love this little board. It was quite the project to get it, you know, to cut out and everything, but it ended up looking pretty good. And then down here, I just have some quick assessment tools. These are my wax warmer smells. I've got some, like, random extra things in there, standards, and then down here I just am like housing all the random crap. This is like all extra decor. And then I usually pull about six kids, but right now I have only um, four chairs, but I do have extra chairs that I can pull from that table because during a small group or intervention time, I only have two humans sitting over there, so I can actually pull two chairs over. But over here I have, and I think I showed you guys this in my last video, but I have things for small groups. It's not complete yet because as I'm going, I'm pulling things. These are all of my like read aloud books. Down here are small group uh, whiteboards, markers, and erasers. And then these are reading materials, and this one will have math. And then up top I just have like pencils and highlighters for um, close reading. And then I have my teacher planner and my teacher edition. This is all kind of ready for when my team teacher and I plan, because we usually plan either here or in her room. And then this is my small group area. Again, this is kind of like my accumulation station. So I have my two bar top tables, like I said, and then I have all of my big whiteboards, which I actually did buy from Home Depot and they did cut them for me. And then I have a mini whiteboard here and just in case I want it. And then I keep my anchor chart paper here just because it's a great place to keep it standing up straight. Just another place to store junk in here. We've got the guardian of the classroom, Darth Vader. Let me just do a quick, I'll just do a quick pan of this space. Okay, moving on. So in this direction is kind of my little station, my little hub. Uh, this underneath here is where I keep all of my student supplies. And I only reach over here if we need it. The kids know that they're not allowed in here except to grab glue sponges. And I usually take them out ahead of time so they don't really need to come in here. But 
All of this is organized. I have like markers, post-its, paper clips, like basically anything supplies-wise is down under here. And then up on top here, I have all of my weekly drawers. I have my toolbox. All my rooted in reading stuff is in here. I have um, planning stuff and professional stuff. Then I have some six minute solutions here. I have like master copies of things that I use all the time that I make copies of all the time up here. And then I have just like, these are like reading or math centers that I need to copy um, that I use all the time, but I don't have them like, like these are the masters and I pull from these all the time. And then up here are my, is my resource library, which I haven't really been adding into. I need to get better at doing that. And then up here I keep the math and reading centers that I'm finished with that I already copied on colored paper and like laminated. They're being kept in here so that next year all I have to do is like pull from these and I actually plan on getting like one of these for each domain in re or in ELA and in math. That way I can just like label it reading informational text, you know, like whatever the the domain is, you guys know what those are. And then just up top I have some like random things, more random things. Over here I have a space for student work and I am going to do some stuff over there, I promise, it's just not there yet. And then I have my giant Kurt Plunk, my inbox, and I have my reminder here. So um, one of these is for reading response journals and the other one is for regular work, but they're kind of just throwing their work in both of them, which is fine. My red one would usually go here for notebooks. And um, then over here, I just have the centers that I'm currently using. And I kind of already explained this in my last video. So if you want to know what I do for math and reading centers, you can go to my um, reading, my centers and small groups vlog. And then down here, just like I said, random storage. This is like all extra things for if I got a new student, like book bins and binders and notebooks. And then these are like extra center things. I put all my centers in big Ziploc bags. And so those are there ready to go. And then underneath here is just more storage, which I don't really need to show you guys because it's just all the things that would be like in a cabinet, you know, like extra notebooks and other things that like some STEM activity stuff is down under there. And then moving on this direction, I have my college corner, which is all ASU themed. And I do have a picture of my grandma and her twin sister. They actually both graduated from the exact same college as me 50 years earlier. So they were actually guests at my graduation ceremony. So there they are <laughs> with me. Um, I've got my marquee here, which you can't really, there you go. And then next to it, I just have my Smart Spot, Smart Spot book, which I got from polka dots please I think and I just put this together so that if I have a student who isn't using their smart spots correctly I can reference them to come back and read the book and then I also have tissues and my 365 days of wonder book then as we pan this direction I just have my huge whiteboard which I did outline with lights um, some flexible seating things I'm not having anyone sitting here though I haven't been because it's kind of bowing in the middle and that's not really safe. I don't really have a whole lot in those yet, but I'm sure I will. <laughs> um, I got this cute little thing from Walmart. I saw this on Instagram. I forget who it was, but I really like this. I, I use it to hold my speaker and then like extra markers. Um, but this is the whiteboard. My schedule cards I actually just made by myself on PowerPoint and I put in some bitmojis for all of them. And then I've got more flexible seating items in this bucket. I have a front station, so if I'm doing anything up front, I can just kind of plop things there. Um, my secret word of the day is what I use instead of go. So like, okay, I say, okay, we're gonna move to our smart spots, ready, whoop, whoop, instead of like go. Um, and I change the word every day. Smart board does not work as a smart board, it's just, <laughs> A board that's projected on. I'm working on getting a cord so I can actually use it as a smart board, but for now, <laughs> these are misfits. 
classroom rules and I just printed them as reminders instead of rules because I do have my seven rules, my whole brain teaching rules and uh, they're most important to me. So over here is just my rule board and calendar and then once we get into multiplication as the students master their facts, I'll be writing their names in here. And then Jennifer actually has this in her room and I love the idea. It's to remind students to explain further when they answer a question um, by saying because. And then I have my time to be kind. I think the original person that did this was Teaching in Wonderland um, and I really like it. This is crooked so I need to fix that. Panning over here to my cabinets, I just have some things being stored up top. Um, not going to show you what's in the cabinets because it doesn't matter. All I'll tell you is over here is basically all math manipulatives, signs and posters. I've got some um, privacy folders in there and then old curriculum that came with the school is in this one. Then I've just got like paper, paper, and then random stuff. So I keep my class jobs under the sink and again those are bitmojis. <laughs> this is all hand sanitizer that I got at the beginning of the year that I'm saving up. Over here is where, so my children, my students water bottles actually live on this counter during the day. Two of my cuties left them here. Um, but I keep them over here that way if they need a drink they can just ask and come over and get a drink from their water bottle. And then I put my little pencil thing over here with tissue and then this cute little guy from Target. And then I do have one of my wax warmers over here as well. I'm actually gonna turn it off. Then up here I've got my pencil sharpener and my crayon sharpener, which has been a godsend because we've been using crayons like crazy. And then I have our cubbies, which look like a hot mess. But guys, third graders, the room is clean and their stuff is put where it belongs and that is all I care about. This is a student who's not here anymore. <laughs> this one looks really good. Number uh, six, that looks like nine. That should be flipped upside down. And then up here I have all of our Avid binders. And then up here I have these two posters from Teaching and So Forth and I just blew them up and put them in frames and I reference them all the time when I'm teaching reading or when we're talking about growth mindset. Over here we did a plant unit last week and I thought it would be cuter to display all of their work in the window so that everyone could enjoy them instead of just on the board where we could enjoy them. Okay, now I'll talk about all the flexible seating options. I don't get real fancy with my flexible seating because it's expensive so I utilize what I have. So I just have this small rectangular table with regular chairs and then on each of the table groups, I have one of these little plants from Ikea. I actually just stuck them in there because it was like too much on top. And then I have scissors and crayons in here. These were from uh, Walmart. They were a dollar. And I just keep the crayons in there. And then on each table, I also have the classroom rules just rewritten. So I have this seating, which is just regular chairs. And then over here is the floor seating with cushions. Over there is more floor seating with cushions. This is my teaching station, I'll show you that in a second. These are more floor seats with the inflatable cushions. Back here, this is designed to be a standing space and I do need to get it raised a little bit because most of the kids are just sitting at it. But I do have chairs underneath in case the students do wanna sit. And then there's another space right there. This is mostly reserved for uh, when a student needs to be removed from the area. This one is my Ottomans, and I need to get a new one and replace that one because it's broken, but there's just more storage in these Ottomans as well. And then when it's not intervention time, so anytime before lunch, the students may sit back here as well. So really I don't have like flexible seating. I have open seating at tables, either in a chair, standing, or sitting on the floor. I just let my students choose where they're going to sit throughout the day. So nothing really, and I do have some table desks or uh, lap desks as well. So it like flexible seating doesn't have to cost you a lot of money. You can literally do it with tables and the floor and chairs and having them stand. 
Um, the idea behind flexible seating is just having them choose where they're gonna sit for that time. I have enough seating in here for 30 people, so it is pretty spaced out. I only have 23 students, so it is, we have a lot of room and it's really nice. So I'm gonna talk about my teaching station really fast and then that will conclude my classroom tour. So I just have my Ikea table behind my students and I really like this because I can have a student sit back here and kind of lead while I'm walking around and I kind of jump from back here to up front and it's just nice because I can be behind the students instead of in front of them with my back turned. So my back is never to them because if I'm standing back here, I can see all of their papers, I can see all of their whiteboards, and nobody can hide anything from me because I can see from behind them. So I just have my supply caddy here with my remotes, my clickers, my grabbers, which are our PBIS tickets, and then I have whiteboard markers, basically everything that the students would need I have here um, as a model. Like, so if I say, okay, we're gonna use a pencil, we have a pencil, um, pretty much everything you need. Uh, a whiteboard for modeling. I have my Lenovo. Um, I do have a set of speakers, hi. Um, and then I have a cart here that has lots of items on it. I have my weekly plans in here and I just keep them in a sheet protector with a little binder clip and I just kind of hook it to the cart. I also have my students like login information for the computers and Prodigy and like a class list. So if I ever need to like check their numbers, these are all the bathroom sticks that I need to pass back. I have my example binder in here, and then this is just where I keep all of my things. So basically everything they have, I have. So I am modeling organization as well. So I have a math book. These are my stamps. I use them for writing. So whenever, like, as we're doing process writing, um, I'm giving them stamps for each part of the process. So like for one paragraph, I gave them this stamp. And then today I said, okay, if you have all six stamps, that means you're done, and um, they could play a typing game and then I have a book that I'm currently reading because my students have books they're currently reading so sometimes I'll say okay pull out our books we're gonna do silent reading and I'll actually sit and read a book as well or at least pretend to read a book <laughs> uh, down here I have more things that I might use like pencils and markers and then down here I just have some collaborative structuring materials so some like partnering cards these are from uh, I forget what they're called. They sent these to me as a gift and these are just for brain breaks. And then I have some like other brain breaks down here and um, some games that we can just play. So, and then this microphone is for like, if I use any um, like noise level monitors, this is nice to have right here. So that's what this looks like. And I do have students that sit along the cord and I just made sure at the beginning of the year that I told them, you know, it's really important that you guys don't mess with the cord. It's not safe. And they do really well. I don't have any problems with the cord. So I think I covered everything in the room. I'm just going to do a quick 360. And guys, that is my third grade classroom for the school year of 2018, 2019. I love my room, it's my dream room, and I honestly, there, I, I wouldn't change anything. I, it's like everything I ever wanted. So, 
Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you stayed till the end. And if you have any questions, as always, ask them in the comments below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.